Good afternoon. This is Dr. Bill White again, and I, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the tongue. Uh, this is an unusual case. I've only had one like it in my whole lifetime of about 60 odd years, of 61 or two years of, of practicing that I saw this. Uh, Anyway, I'm a general dentist, but I'm a member of the American Orthodontic Society, and this is a society for general and pediatric uh, dentists, and it is a good society to, to get in if you are a dentist, in, in other words, a pediatric dentist or a general dentist, or you can get in it if, if regardless of what kind of dentist you are as far as that's concerned. Uh, we have a wonderful organization, a, a wonderful group of instructors, and uh, have a wonderful uh, executive director. It's a superb guy. Anyway, I want to talk about this this afternoon for just a little while just not having a tongue uh, this real sweet lady came in one day and uh, she was 72 years old and now she could not talk but she could write <laughs> notes faster than I could read them really bad and uh, just a real nice lady and she told me, said, uh, when I was uh, 69 years old, I found out I had cancer of the tongue, and they removed the whole tongue. I mean, uh, it's a bigger organ than you think of. Uh, and uh, took the tongue out when she was 69 years of age, but they didn't put anything back in there to replace the tongue and the pressure that the tongue uh, normally exerts on the teeth. Now her upper teeth stayed fairly well in place. She said she had a beautiful set of teeth at 69 and just look what happens especially to the lower uh, teeth. I guess the tongue has a little more effect on the lower teeth since it's been attached down in that area, uh, but the lower teeth just really close in. The upper teeth uh, relapse uh, somewhat. Uh, anyway, let's get into the case, and uh, I'm going to go. It won't take us very long to go through it, but it's just a wonderful little lady, and. Uh, you don't see much effect of it. Uh, don't see anything missing in this part of the uh, neck here. They did move some muscles, I think, around to help her smile. It's really off. Uh, but just looking straight on uh, this, in this situation, you see where they must have taken it out from the side of the neck here. So she's got a little line right there. But a, an attractive lady, she breathes through a hole. This is a kind of a little scarf she wears around her neck. It looks real nice, and you don't suspect the thing, but she doesn't breathe through the nose or the mouth at all. She breathes through this uh, hole down in here. I didn't ask to get a picture of that. I, Yes, I could have. She'd have probably been uh, gracious and showed me exactly how she did. She told me she breathed through there and she'd write you a note. Now you see their smile is off. You see this side of the neck is kind of changed from this side. Uh, I don't know exactly where the cancer, how much tissue they had to remove, how many muscles in addition to the tongue. It's, but uh, did a good job of it. The only thing they didn't realize is that you have to maintain the teeth. So
so her teeth were all crooked and messed up and she came in for us to work on to straighten her teeth out just get her smile to help it now I couldn't help the muscle structure in here it's going to be that way but I could I lined her teeth up and got them good and it was uh, a kind of a scary thing because when you open the mouth here and look down in there you can see all the way down in her throat down way down here if she opened her mouth and you shine a light, you got to do, do believe you can see down there. So anything you dropped, uh, it went into the stomach. I guess we could have put a pad or something down in the neck here and had it tied with something and caught the things like uh, impression material or anything that you dropped it was gone man it just went right to the stomach it was, it was kind of scary holding on to bands and make it darn sure uh, we banded her molar teeth now the uh, class one relationship is is still pretty good on oh, this is the right side it doesn't look all that bad until you get up in this part of the facial structure right here. This was 1985 when she came in and uh, she lives a good many years after that but somewhere in the 2000s she passed away I think it I don't remember exactly somewhere around 2010 something like that uh, she passed away. It was just a real sweet lady and could come in and smiled and everything. Now the teeth stayed in line down here. I just have to go on what she said. That she had a beautiful set of teeth. I can see if your bite were opened a little bit, you'd have room for the teeth to line up if they were close to the incisal. The upper slipped a little in here when the lower kind of collapsed here. And it, let this go in and stuff. It slipped some, but the upper didn't look all that bad. It was the lower that really did go in. You see where these these teeth were out here, I'm sure, and they're, now they are all in. Not as much over here on this side. And this right the left side of the mouth seemed to be the one that was affected more when you looked at the neck. Okay, here we go again. On the left, there are more collapse in this area right here, but still, class one relationship uh, in the molar area, pretty much class one, and uh, not 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 all that terrible, but. They really went to pot there in uh, some 69, 70, 71, and 72 is just between two and two and a half and three years, something like that. The upper arch of uh, the right side kind of relapsed in here. This is a little bit, but not all that much. And if the bite deepened some, I'm sure it opened some of this space up above. I guess the only thing to learn on this, if you have a patient like that, make something that holds the teeth in place as soon as you possibly can. If you have some kind of surgery that removes even a portion of the tongue, you should replace it. Now this is really uh, collapsed in and out here and uh, this is a rare thing to see now when you've taken an impression of it <laughs> if you squeeze any of your alginate out <laughs> it's gone man I'm telling you it, you just don't put any more in there than you have to in the tray, you know, and get your impressions and uh, 
and stay out of there as much as you can. That's my advice on this. Now we went ahead and uh, bracketed all the teeth. Uh, we banned the six-year molars, I think, and well, we did. They are they are obviously there, and we expanded it back out, and it went fairly good. It's that's 1985, and we're almost got the upper already lined up pretty good. And uh, she luckily had those crowns uh, when we started. I'd hate to have to go in there and do crowns on the teeth. Now, looking up here, you don't see all that much difference, but uh, when we look down below, now, if I took a light and shined it down in this part of the mouth, I mean, you could see, look like a eight or ten, well, at least ten or maybe twelve inches from here down as far as you could see. It was just, I never did try to straighten it out and see. I believe you could have seen right down to the stomach, you know. Uh, but if you you dropped it it went in the stomach or just kept going <laughs> so uh, it was a little bit of a hairy deal wondering if you drop a bracket or a band down there thank god we made it through without dropping anything that i saw if it was a something like a bit of alginate or something nothing that we didn't worry about that too much. Okay, now it's lined up pretty good and we line the bottom teeth up and pull the midline over and got some impressions of it. Now you can kind of see there's nothing, there's nothing in this area right there. Uh, you got a tori or two coming in and uh, I'm sure she's hoping that she'd never have to have any kind of dentures or anything of that nature. Uh, any kind of dental work is a pain after this part. You can't realize how shaky it seems. Now see this is her molar teeth out here and there's nothing if you uh, opened her mouth wider I mean, you just see down, way down in the throat. Okay, here's a Panorex of her, and it looks pretty good. This is uh, 1904 of 85 when we started the case, and uh, I don't remember that last picture. I don't think it took us very long to finish her uh, up. In fact, let me just back up here a place or two. I don't know whether we've got any dates on that. Uh, that's 87 of 86, I see. Right there. 7 of 86. So we're pretty far along here. So it didn't take too much over a year to get it wound up and we didn't try to hurry at all through the through the situation, uh, through the case. Okay, let's. And here she is again, but uh, the appearance was, uh, in fact, I think these are the original pictures. If they're the ones that we finished, it's not uh, much different. So. The facial structure didn't reveal a great deal, but she was happier with a better smile. And, but however, her smile was still off. Uh, she had muscle uh, problems in there, so the smile was a little to the to the side. I think this. Uh, see what I've got here. It's it's not too much different. Anyway. This is a rare case and I just thought I would make this little video and uh, show you her case and 
if this ever happens to you just be very very careful but if you see something like this coming up get ready for it and it wouldn't hurt if you made something that fit over the teeth before cancer operation so that you could uh, uh, get something on her teeth immediately and keep them from moving so I'll hush up here and uh, hope this means something to somebody but if you wonder about the tongue not having much effect on the teeth well if you take it away it had a whale of a lot of effect on the lower teeth and it had some effect on the upper teeth as well and so when people swallow improperly and keep their tongue in the lower part of their mouth the lower mouth widens out and the upper doesn't and kids that do not nurse and suck and have to breathe through their nasal cavity and develop it have problems but uh, there's a lot of effect you know by just actually breathing and functioning right and if you got a functional problem and you think well I'll just leave it alone till they're 12 or 14 this is a big big mistake because you develop all sorts of things you're breathing you develop a greater facial height in here and that messes up your looks and then to correct that is a real problem so early intervention and preventive orthodontics is a very essential part of orthodontics and that's where the pediatric dentist should be working in that area so I'm gonna harp on that uh, until we get pediatric dentists being taught orthodontics and doing them stuff like they can do and they're already there so uh, I'll hush on that but uh, hope you don't have any cases like this so I'll pass this on thank you a lot and have a good day Dr. Bill White bye bye